Here's the data from yesterday's quizzes on using commas as introductory elements. Um, we, this is for the whole, whole grade level, so on average I'd say we're averaging a little bit above 60%, which is pretty good. Um, moving into it, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a collaborative thing. Can you raise your hand if you think you have an idea of where the comma should go in this sentence? I'm going to wait for a little bit longer for hands to come on up. We should be reading this sentence and thinking about where the commas go. Selena, what do you got? All right. Uh, raise your hand now if you agree with Selena. Strong work, Selena. Um, so we're going to go from there. The next one that we have, same exercise. Okay, go here. Fine. Uh, raise your hand if you have an idea where the comma goes in this one. Gonna wait for more hands to come up. Try to get a hand up there, Ryder. Try to get a hand up, Aiden. You can do it. So fast. Got a mask up here, but thanks for the leadership. Naya, what do you got? We're store and I. Store and I. Strong work. You got that as well. I'm gonna go beyond that right now. So here's common tip number one. It goes with the sheet of paper that you have. That sheet of paper should go into your permanent notes, so make sure to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a ton of information on this sheet of paper about the different uh, reasons you might have a comma uh, after an introductory element. It lists different kinds of introductory elements. We're about to go through some examples of those, but what I would recommend doing as we start to proceed, and if you find yourself in your own writing, wondering if you should have a comma or not, come back to this sheet of paper. I'll give you some more comma tips like this, and you'll likely be able to look through to sort of solidifying and bringing whether or not you need a comma. So that's a long-winded way of saying when you have a main clause, a complete sentence, and you are introducing it in some way, giving more information before the start of the sentence, you want to have a comma between that introduction and the sentence itself. Here's one example. At midnight in Count Dracula's castle up on the hill, comma, you can hear Diana Ross crooning from the stereo. If we look at it, this is the main clause. It is a complete sentence with a subject. It has a verb phrase here, which is can here. Um, and then a complete thought. This whole chunk of stuff is just introducing that main clause. So we separate it from the main sentence with a comma. For the next one, I'm gonna ask you all to identify the subject and the verb in the main clause. With me, Noah? You need to stand up, wiggle your body around, wake up if you do it, okay, man? Uh, so, we're trying to identify the subject and the verb in this sentence of the main clause. Slurping up the last few drops of the chocolate shake, Beverly was struck by lightning and toasted as crisp as a french fry. What do we think the subject is here? So, I'm going to wait for some hands to come up. Thank you to the hands that are coming up. Let's get some more up. Subject and verb in this sentence. I need you to take your headphones out. Next time I have to tell you. Okay. Zach, what do you got? Alright, so the verb is slurping or toasting? Verb is slurping or toasting. So, good guess in both of those spots. Anybody want to help Zach out? No. Selena, take a shot. Beverly is the what? Subject. Beverly is the subject, actually, Selena. That's the person that is doing stuff or having stuff done. Lyric, what do you got? The verb is actually another one of these phrases. It's was struck and toasted is also another, another verb. So all this is an introductory for element. It is just introducing, giving you more information about this main sentence. I think it's probably time for us to move into individual practice, but I wonder if there are any sort of questions out there right now 
that you all know. What do you got for so, me? So I'm going to tell you that shortly. Did you have a question? I did, but it's not involved in this. Okay. So, um, maybe ask me. It was not a good Anybody else? We're doing the introductory. Yeah. Did you even write one? No. Yeah. Yes. Don't show that to him. I agree. I know. Where are these other Where's your hat? I know, right? All right. Go. And did anyone have other questions come up? Did you maybe hear a sentence where you're like, oh, that comma's in the wrong place? Or did you hear a sentence and it confused you a bit? Yeah. So, I'm getting no. I'm feeling that we might be ready to move on, so we're gonna move on. Last little chance to have some instruction or coaching. What do you got, Liz, thanks. What is, don't what, what is it better? What is this? Yes. Okay, so thanks for bringing it up. I need everybody to get quiet. I'm going to reframe it again. So, one thing that Mr. Green and myself have identified as like a common mistake we're making is we are either not using commas at all or we're using commas incorrectly a lot of the time. So we're trying to target that so that we can improve on it. What's up, Liz? Oh, no, I mean, like, what's an introductory, an introductory element? Yeah. So an introductory element is something that happens at the very start of your sentence. It's separate from the main clause, the subject, the verb, and the complete thought that are the, the sentence. And it just gives you more information about usually that subject, but in, about the sentence. Maybe when it happened, uh, maybe why it happened. So, uh, to make sure that I had a lunch, comma, I made a sandwich before coffee. No. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it's tricky, and a lot of it has to deal with judgment calls, which is why we're gonna practice it a lot, because hopefully we get better at making those judgments. So, uh, right now, we're gonna take this quiz is, we're gonna go to joinmyquiz.com, uh, I need you to use your real names. If I see inappropriate names or playful names, I'm going to give you the boot. After we take this, we're going to go over ones that uh, really confused us. But please get here. Quick pause. I need this to be quiet, individual work. I want to know what you can do, not what your partner can do. So, hands up if you need a hand. But let's try to make it quiet, individual work. Hey, there, Liz. I'm going to start it shortly. If you have to join, you'll still be able to join. This music super heat. Super. Rubble bucket. It's so good. Alright, we have nine. Yeah, All right, I'm going to press the start button. If you're not there already, please join. Oh. <laughs> We got the code right here. Oh, Hand up if you need help. Yeah, we're doing it again. 
Use the common tip sheet if you need it. Yes, sir. Oh no, I screwed up. I'm just going to pick sort of at random one of these that it shows we didn't do so hot at, and we're going to go over it. So I'm not sure if it'll be your one, but here's it jumbles up all the questions. So I'm going to pause because I don't want to wear my voice out. If you are talking right now, I need you to stop. I know that you might want one to go over. I'm just going to pick a random one. If you have questions after lunch or maybe at the end of class, let me know and I'll try to help you out with that specific one. So, looking at this, which answer shows the correct punctuation? Holding up the elevator doors, the kind man smiled at the tired mother. Uh, Naya, what do you got? Doors, comma, the. Doors, comma, the. Um, holding up the elevator doors, comma, the kind man smiled at the tired mother. That's right. This is giving us more information about the kind man that is the subject. Uh, let's see if we can find another one. 
Yeah. Actually, I'll just call it there. Um, so finish up. You're all going to pack on up and have a great lunch, team. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God.